Hey guys, this is Dan from Magic Pachinko Restorations with another short video on a vintage pachinko machine. If you enjoy watching these videos, please consider subscribing. Um, that wasn't meant as a subtle anything. I just had an itch. Um, <laughs> I should edit this crap out, but I hope you kind of get a kick out of it. Um, where was I? Oh yes, another video on a vintage pachinko machine. If you enjoy these, please consider subscribing. Uh, best way to contact me is directly through the website, magicpachinkorestorations.com. Uh, there's a contact page there. You can put your name, uh, email, and hopefully a phone number so I can talk to you. Easiest way for me to communicate is talking to you. And then it also will give you an automated response that uh, shows you how to send me some pictures directly to my phone so that I can be looking at the pictures when I call you back. Okay, so this is a 1972, I believe, uh, Nisogen Model A that we did just uh, what I call a functional restoration on it. Um, this machine has kind of an interesting story behind it. Um, the person who sent it to me um, got this machine from a friend and had it for uh, quite a while and then decided to give it back to his friend as kind of a surprise, but he wanted to make sure that it was in good working order. So he sent it to me and asked me to get it working well so that he could send it back to his friend, which I think is very, very cool. So uh, we did not uh, tear everything off. Uh, this is the original play field. Um, we didn't do the wood, things like that, but the backside all got taken off, got thoroughly cleaned, put a coat of polyurethane on this board. There, there was no uh, wires, wiring harness at all. The, the only thing that was here were the two leaf switches. They had had the, the wires just cut off. So I, I made a new harness and, and um, just made my own little circuit board here for connecting the 12 volt power supply to it. Um, this has got some pretty cool um, attraction pieces on it. I've, I've seen these before. Uh, these will open and close depending on where the balls go. And um, there's only one tulip on this, or well, two tulips, one, one crown tulip. Now what I, what I did with this one, normally when we do the functional, it's, it's the, the whole back, the wiring, and then I clean this all up really well, uh, take it all apart because it'll get loaded with all sorts of crap. Take this off, get it all clean. And then that's about it. But I, I, <laughs> I did a lot more cosmetic work on this machine than I would have um, with a normal, just functional restoration. I just, I was so impressed with the, the fact that uh, this gentleman is gonna pay the restoration fee and then, then give it to a friend. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come in on this a little bit. Um, because these are, are a mechanical um, thing, I wanted to make sure that they would work properly. So I took everything off. I didn't pull the, the nails or the rails, but I took all of the attraction pieces off and cleaned them thoroughly, uh, re-silvered the little tulips, put a new crown sticker on this, made sure these were functional. Um, this was pretty dirty down in here. This was quite filthy. You need to make sure that the ball handling mechanism is clean and functional anyway. So I just did a lot of cleaning. I tried to clean the play field up as best I could. Um, so with, with that said, uh, I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I just can't stand a dirty Pachinko machine. So whether I'm, I'm supposed to clean it um, based on what the customer's paying for, um, I usually clean them more than, more than I need to, uh, but that's just me. So let me get this plugged in. Uh, we talked in the other video, uh, the previous video, about the attraction piece up on a lot of the Nisogen uh, Model A's. Uh, was much smaller and it was yellow, uh, the, or orange probably. This has a red lens in it, which is, which is very typical. And right now the uh, seesaw is tipped, so the uh, center attraction light is on. So that's what it looks like when it's all lit up. And we'll just tip this back where it belongs. And the way that you load a Model A is there's, there's a, let me see what this actually says. Open and shut, okay. You wanna make sure that this this wire is up. Let me see if I can get a closer look at it for you. Right here. This is up or shut, this is open. Shut, 
open. You want to make sure it's shut. And when it, it is shut, <laughs> come here, you. Uh, it puts the fingers, the brass fingers, down into the track so that when the balls come in, they stop. If you open this, it lifts the brass fingers out of the way and allows the balls to exit the machine. So make sure this is up and then you're ready to load the machine. So when you load a, a Model A, what's going to happen is you put the balls in the upper hopper, they're going to run down this chute into the turnaround, drop down this tube, start to fill this up and run down to the jackpot where they stop and then they'll start to back up. When this tray gets full enough, this will close and stop the balls from flowing if everything is adjusted properly. So, put a handful in. And they're, they're running down a double file into the jackpot. That's fine. Okay, so the, the center tray has enough balls in it to be functional. Um, I think there should be a few more in there. I'm just going to let a few more run down in there. Or you just throw some in. It really doesn't matter. Um, the ball outlight is still on because there's not enough balls in this tray. So you want to make sure that you get enough in there. And then sometimes this just gets stuck. Um, it's, you know, it's 50 years old. What are you going to do? Um, but this will drop with the weight of the balls and lift off of the micro switch or the, the uh, leaf switch and turn the light off. So it's just, you know, this switch right here is what's doing it. You want to make sure that is down because what that does is it lifts up the, uh, the gate stop down here. So now you can actually play the game. So right now the gate, the machine is all set to play. Start to launch, see what we can do. So we, we got one win here and it dropped and we got another win. Uh, this is closed now. If the ball goes in through here, it will open that back up. Now in the previous video, I noticed that the spring tension wasn't quite as much As I like it to be and what I think is that after time <laughs> okay we'll fix that um, after time the springs relax a little bit um, after they've been stretched out so I prefer to have a little more tension to the point where it's it's dropping up in here rather than here so I'm going to just come back here and underneath, underneath this metal piece is the spring tensioner and you just pull it to the right one little hole and hook it back up again. And that'll give you a little more spring tension. So now we can get it all the way over to the other side. Hmm. Okay, we'll fix that. I've got three of them in there. I wonder if I can get four of them in there. I don't know. And we're getting to the point where enough winds have come out. It's depleted the upper hopper. So you, you just push this over. Releases the ball, scoop them up right up over the top, and drop them in the tray. And then when you get enough back in, it'll turn the uh, the ball out light. So we'll get this fixed, no problem. But this is the 1973, I believe, 72 or 73 uh, Nisogen Model A. Hope you like it. Okay, this is a little add-on to the previous video, although I may set this one up as a separate video. Um, 
the way tulips are supposed to work, the crown tulips anyway, and most other tulips, you put a, if the tulip is closed, you put a ball in, it's going to run through and drop out the back and open. The next ball in should close the tulip. And as you can see, this one, it, it goes in, but it gets stuck in there. Okay, it's not going all the way through. And the, and the reason being is, I don't know if I can get this, you guys to see it. It's kind of hard to, but in there, oops, in there, um, right at the end are two little, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, fangs, I guess. I'm not sure if you can see this, but I'm just going to go in gently with a small pair of needle nose. And obviously I've, this, this was uh, the machine that was stuck or the tulip that was stuck on, on the previous video machine. And I, it's much easier to take these things off and work on them like this than it is to try to do it on the machine. So I, I bent those tabs out just a little bit. So can I drop one in, it, it goes through the tulip and opens it and, it, and we're still not there. So I'm gonna open these up just a little bit more. When you do these adjustments, you wanna do them pretty pretty gently. You don't want to go in there and bend them way out. That's good. Still getting stuck. And it's interesting that these get that much off. Um, I don't know what causes it because they obviously were Still just a touch off. And what I'm doing is looking to, to make sure they're even on both sides. I think this one's in a little more than the other one. I, it's hard to, hard to tell. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, so tulip is closed. Drop a ball in, opens it up and goes through. Drop a ball in, <laughs> there it goes. I didn't have the tulip straight. Drop in, there we go, okay? So that's the way you adjust these guys. It's, oh, that's the way a tulip should work every time. Okay, and again, it's just by bending those little tabs. In my case, I bend them out. Sometimes you actually have to bend them in, but most of the time you bend them out a little bit and then uh, just put it back on the machine. It's pretty easy. Thanks for watching.